Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our 31st lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. As you, all, as you know, we always do 40 minutes, so we shall go ahead and start our counter. So without wasting much time, let's go straight into today's business. If you still remember, in the previous lecture, we were able to create the complete logic of financial record, whereby we could be able to uh, sync the financial records data from internet to what? To the financial record uh, uh, a display and we went through the whole architecture so we were able to to refresh and be able to do it and get the financial records even in background like we you, you know what you did in the previous lecture so in this lecture we're going to take it from there and proceed to more things all right so let's go ahead and uh, open our financial periods model so you can see it is here i've already run my project so i'm going to add here two methods one method is going to be for deleting a specific item and another method is going to be for saving a specific item uh, okay or a single item so let's go ahead and put here delete maybe this item um method or i can say maybe function okay so to do this we shall just simply write uh that okay you can see this one is just delete I mean it is a st it is returning a string so it will go ahead and say delete so it does a sync and then initialize our database and after making sure that our database is well initialized we go ahead if it fails we return what an error if it doesn't fail we go ahead and delete the item with over provided what of this particular id and then after you go ahead and do what if it fails we return the error that it failed because of this okay so we can also maybe write here a static delete of maybe of a specific item maybe static um, uh, delete function so for deleting something that is maybe outside okay so when you provide an id so this is the method it's just the same but whereby this one we shall provide a specific id so we're going to have now one more for saving uh save function okay we're going to call it save function so this save function it will be like this okay so it will get an item after getting an item it initializes the, 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 the table if it fails it stops there after successfully initializing it goes ahead and insert this uh item like this okay and it does re 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 specify if, uh, if there's a conflict if it if it is successful it returns empty if it is failed it returns the reason so this is what uh for saving what a static period i mean a static method so there are the methods that makes our whole logic here uh, complete. I hope you've seen them and you, I hope you've uh, understood their logic. This one is for deleting a, a specific item that you own. This one is for deleting an external item by just providing an ID. You can watch the method. And this one is for the what? For saving a current item or saving the current changes. Now, uh, we proceed. Uh, so if you still remember, I told you that this thing can be a little bit complex or like uh, it can be a little bit complex doing it so uh, you cannot see my screen now can you see my screen no can you see it You're now not Hope you can see it now. Hope it's okay now. Is it? Mm, yes. All right. We we'll launch the video. All right. So we have added those functions. Now, right now, what we're going to do, we're going to write the logic of generating this entire method. Okay. You see this logic. I mean, you see this uh, item. So it is a little bit complex uh, to do the whole of it. Okay, so we're going to write the logic whereby we're going to be generating it from the what? From uh, the database. I mean from the web. So we can, we, can, we can reduce this burden of creating this whole thing. So it is a very powerful logic that I would like you to watch very, very carefully so you can understand how it does work, how it does work. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to come to our method.
I mean, we're going to come, we're going to open our web project, which is Inveto Track, if you still remember. So I'll go ahead and run this project, PHP at and serve, and then I go ahead and open it in my browser. Inveto Track, I can log in as admin, or I'm logging as company. Okay, so yeah, I'm logged in. So now we're going to create our hot, our generator. So generator, it's just going to be a method that is going to help us in generating uh, things, okay? As you can hear, it's a generator. So what you're going to do first, you're going to create a model. So I want you to watch very, very carefully because this is going to be a very powerful technique that you'll need in your heart, in your programming endeavors, okay? So watch it very, very carefully. I invented this myself. So I'm going to come to our important commands. I believe they are somewhere here. And then you're going to create a what? A model. We're going to create a model. Uh, we're going to create a model for generating code. Okay. So I'll come here and say uh, PHP has some create model. And I can call it what? I can call it generator. Okay. Or I can call it gen. Okay, like this okay so it's going to be our code our model for generating uh, the flat the that code so I'll go ahead and open the terminal and run this uh, command to create this model so running this command I'll go ahead and open this more um, I'll go ahead and press here so I can go ahead and I remember I put this one so it can create the migration so let's go to the migration all right so here we're going to I uh, put uh, the class name. I mean, we're going to put the class name. So I'm going to put here uh, class name. What will be the name of the class? And then we put here table and name. And then you put here. Um, I'm going to put the table name after. I'm going to put the end. Point. Okay, so the three things that we're going to need. I don't know whether we need any more thing. I think those are the most things that we need. Okay, so after doing that, let's go ahead and now generate this uh, model. We migrate. So after migrating, let's create a let's create this uh, uh, endpoint. Okay. Let's create its controller. So I'll come here and put gen, gen controller, and then I also come and put here gen. Okay. So let's go ahead and run. So there we go. So I'll go ahead and copy this, and then go to routes.php. Here we are, and then I'll come here. And put gens. Oh, what is this? I've already put here. I put maybe gen generator. Okay. I can put gen. Okay. That's going to be our what? Our code generator. All right. So after doing that, I'll go ahead and put gen. Oh my god! I already put this one here. Okay. So this is our code generator, and I would like us to do it together. So after doing this code generator, now we're going to start uh, creating it, okay? Let's create, for example, now, I'm going to recreate this inverter, I mean this financial period, okay, model. I'm going to recreate it. I'm going to base Chimac on this one. See, this financial period has almost every process that we basically need. So I'm going to, based on the, on the system, to create it. I'm going to regen to generate it. Okay, so uh, the class name is called financial period model. That's going to be a class name. So I'll go ahead and create here and click on new to create it. So financial period model. Uh -huh. So what is the table name? So where does this um, uh, financial table found? Now we are going to come to a database. Okay, 
and then go to our our project this is our project and then go to our our what then go to our then go to our sorry then you go to our financial period financial periods are here okay then we come here we put it here so it's going to be the table name so it will be good if we're fetching this table directly from what from the database so in laravel there is a way how so let's go to our gen controller okay this generator okay so I come to our gen controller so here it is so I want to make this a drop down and this one I want to make it a drop down this table name I want it to be a drop down of what of the tables that are in my database so I'm going to create a function that is going to be fetching the what the table names okay so we're going to go in our utilities I'm going to go in our utilities here so you come in our utils class you know where it is under models and then you come to util class so you go ahead and create this function so this function it is going to help us to get all the names in the what of, of tables in our database so you say i will call it the public it's a static public function i'll call it get table names okay so this this function will go ahead and say tables equals to db to select and then say show tables like the way it is here so you write exactly how it is db select to show tables and then you put uh, the environment. So the environment is, uh, I mean the database name. So the database name is this database that is now environment there. So you collect this variable like this. Then after doing that, we go ahead and get the, the create the, an empty array of table names. And then after, you write the word db name equals to, and then you say tables, and then put underscore, and then you say in, and then put underscore, and then put inv and then you put table name okay or the database name so like the way it is here so this one is going to help us to fetch all the tables in our database okay so this is how you fetch the tables then after doing like that you go ahead and loop uh through uh this table okay we go ahead and loop through these tables that we shall have got here remember these tables this 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 what this command gets for us all the tables that are in the what in the database so to collect them as in form of names collect them as in form of names so to collect these tables in form of names to collect these tables in form of names we just simply say tables and then you say as key and then you put what the table so here it's going to get for you each table and then after you 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 collect the table name like this okay by just putting table and then the table name like this and then after you specify it like this and then you put them here so let me let me just do this step by step okay so let me come here i, I already created this function let me come here to our generator this one here i just go ahead and say tables so i can say maybe tables tables equals to utils and then you say get tables and then put underscore names all right so this one is going to get for us the tables so let me just die here and say here okay so if i come here and refresh let me organize these tabs so let me come here and refresh so if i refresh you'll see at that i'm here now after being there let me sorry 
Let me put this one this way. Let me put this one here. So after being here, so what I'm going to drop this one down here. So I'm going to show you what this 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 does, what this particular line does. It is db select and then you put the word show tables exactly as it is there in capital letters as it is there. So this one will get you all the tables in the database. Let me just dump them dd there. Then if I come and refresh here, can you see that? We've got uh, this array with 31 variables. So these are the number of tables that are in our database. So if you come in, in our database, you'll see that you have 21, 21, 22 tables. And they are here. Plus this zero, so they are 22 tables. So if you open a single table, you'll see it is just an array which has tables, this word tables in the name of the database. And then, so it's just put tables in the name of the database, and then it will get you the what? The table name. Okay. So, likewise to here, likewise to here, likewise to here. So, it is an array that you can access by just putting this uh, key, and then you'll be able to get all the tables. So, this one will help, will help us to get all the tables name. So, I'm going to look through that here. So... I'll go ahead and get the, the, the database name. This is how I get the database name. Then after getting the database name, you go ahead and say tables. You see tables in, this is my own word. I know just if I want to access this one, I'll have to set the tables in and then the database name. So I go ahead and say db name, sorry. Okay. Uh, equals tables in, so I can just see this is repetition. Eh? I can just come and put this one here. I think the same thing. It's the same thing since the database name is here. So this uh, name is going to be tables in, and then I put this word tables in, the one that you're seeing here. Okay. And then I put the word, the database name. So I put here the database name. So at the end of the day, if I come and do D here and I do DD here, you'll see that I have this particular key here. If I refresh here, you see that I'm having that particular key. I've been able to create it myself. So I look now through the tables. Eh? I look through these tables. And then if I come and die here, you see that uh, this is just a single object that I can access its value, this particular value, by adding this word in front of in front of this particular uh, value that is here, which is the table. Or by adding this word in front of what? In front of uh, this particular keyboard, so I'll just simply come and say table, table as it is, and then I put a dollar sign. Remember, this is a variable dollar sign, and then say db table. So it means that this this word is going to be replaced here. At the end of the end, at the end of the day, we shall be end up getting what the right table. So let's say that if I just echo them here and I continue. So if I say echo, and then I put br and continue okay so you'll see that i'll be able to list all my tables so if i refresh here i hope you can see that let me die here let me die here okay so if i come and refresh you'll see that i'm able to get all the tables in our database i do you see that so that the function that is going to help us to get all the tables in our database so that is how you can be able to get all the tables let's say that you want to write the logic of backing up your database something like that so you can get the tables of the database in that way so i'm going to push all these tables in what in an array so i go ahead and get the, the their name as it, as it is and i make it as a key here and i push them there okay i just make the uh, the name as a key at the same time i put that table there so if i come here you'll see that i have now these tables in this particular array so if I come and put here DD, you'll see that I have an array of these tables. Can you see? An array of tables is here. So that is so beautiful that we have now the tables. So this is that's the function. So you can pause the video or you can follow it step by step. You'll see that you'll be able to achieve something like that where you can fetch all the tables in the database. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here to our table here and they make this one what? A drop down. So I'm going to come and put here, select. And remember, this is our tables. I've called them here. So I come and put here, uh, select table, select table, and then I make them what? I make them options. Okay. And I make it also uh, required. Okay. So that is our what? Our simple table.
I can, I mean a simple list of tables. Okay, so I hope you've seen that. So now let's go ahead and let me make all these things uh, required. So I can say maybe this one is an API endpoint. All right, so if I come here and now refresh, you'll see that we shall have our what? Our, 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 our form that is straightforward. Now we want to mimic, we want to benchmark from this uh, successful, we want to benchmark from this uh, successful what? Successful, uh, successful financial period model that we've just created, okay? And we see how we can generate it. So once we finish that, it will be a very powerful technique. It will be a very powerful technique that can help us to generate the future things, okay? All right, so let's proceed. Now, it is, see, you see this is a um, financial period, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I put here the class name, which you've named as financial period. So I'm benchmarking from this one, meaning now the remaining one, we shall just be generating this. So financial period model. Okay, that is a, that's going to be our, our class name. Now, after we select the table, so you see, now when I click here, I have the list of what? Of tables. So I select the table from which I want this. <laughs> I want this, this, uh, this, this financial period to pick from. So I'll go ahead and say financial period. So this financial period sh should be collecting from these ones. All right, so now after I put the endpoint where these records will be selected. So I'll go ahead and select this one, okay? So endpoint, so the endpoint is financial period, okay? According to what we designed. So I'll come and put this one here, financial period. So after doing that, I'll go ahead and create. So you'll see now I will have created our simple what? Our simple financial period. Now, after doing that, the next thing, I'm just going to organize this table. So let's organize the table. So let's go ahead and organize this table and make it much more cleaner. I remove this created that. I don't need them. Okay. So let me make the latest one to be on top. So it's going to be uh, model. And let's say order by ID descending. Okay. So let me just okay yeah so i think that's enough so table name i think that's enough table name what end point oh, that's enough so if i come here and refresh i'll be able to see the table name that the, the table that one to i mean the class name the table name and the end point now i want to put here a button for printing so or generating uh generating um generating a a model okay I'm going to call it my generating model so that you can be able to generate our model. So to do that, I'll just simply come and uh, come and say so I'll come here and say action and maybe say maybe gen I can say maybe generate gen model so i can put here maybe generate model so i can put here display so i go ahead and put the link for generating model so it can be a public link so i can say maybe uh url equals to and then i put url and then put maybe uh, generate models and then I put question mark ID equals to equals to I attach this ID like this okay so that is our our URL so go ahead and put this URL in our heart in our button Okay, so you see, generate mode it is there. So it will, and then you can make it maybe open in a what? In a new, in a new tab. So by just simply putting target blank, and then you put href like this. So you can see, that's our URL. Okay, so if I come here and refresh, you'll see our URL called generate mode. So if I click here, 
you'll see it is throwing that there is this page was not found why we have not created this what i have not created this endpoint for generate models okay so let's go ahead and create the endpoint for generate models so to create the endpoint of generate models generate models i'll just simply come to our web okay i'll just simply come to our what to our web route control p and then right web route this route you know where it is it is here our main public route there okay so in this web route i'm going to i'm going to add a what i'm going to add our our route okay for generate models okay so that is the route i just simply put route gate and then put generate models and then after i come here and i open okay and then i can maybe die and say generate model so i have to write that function here so i can put your function function let's say generate models like this just die generate models okay so if i come here and refresh you see generate models Good. Good. so uh that is generate models eh? after doing that now i uh, i'm going to go ahead and now call the function for what for generating the models eh? okay so let's go ahead and create it okay let's get and create it i think i've already done this before so i can benchmark from something okay so i don't repeat myself by thinking twice <laughs> let me put this guy here okay so we are going to to get the id so we are now here we are this point okay so if i refresh we are this point here okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to get the id okay so i'm going to get the id like this and then i go and get and and say maybe our generator is equals to is equal to gen and then say find that okay find and then if it is null say generator not found if it is not null i can just deep split here so if i come and refresh you'll see that our generator is found now in this generator you're going to first write so why are we writing this generator want it to be able to to do us want it to be able to generate for us the models okay i'm going to read the method the method called generate model so i'll come here to a generator here okay i'm going to first write i'll write i'll just method called generate model generate model okay so i write a simple method called generate model just a simple method like this okay so I'm going to call it so let me just die here and say time to gen model like this okay so that's our simple method so I'm going to, uh, to call it here in the web after getting the route I mean after getting the model I go ahead and do what and call it gen model and I call this one okay so it's going to work on generating the model so if I come here and refresh you'll see uh, time to generate 
model. So it is now time to generate the model. So why do you need to generate the model? You want to generate the model so it can have uh, something exactly like uh, the one we want to have here. So we want to generate this code exactly as how it is here. So first things first, okay? Uh, so first things first, uh, first things first, first of all, we are going to need our, we are going to need our, our, our important things, okay? I are going to need, for example, uh, so let's come to our generate model, which is here. So the first things first, the first thing that you're going to need, you're going to need the tables, okay? I mean the, 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 the columns in the tables, okay? The columns in the table, okay? The columns in the table. Maybe I'll go once. The columns in the table. That's what we're going to first get. Okay. So remember, we have the table names of which we can get here. We can just play DD like this. So we have the table name. The table name. Now this is the table name. Now I want to get the columns in this part in this table. Okay. I want to get the columns in this table. So if I come here. I want in simple terms I want to get these things okay so if I want to get these columns so what do I do I'll just simply come and say first of all I can just simply come and say get columns in these tables okay so this is how you get the columns in the tables I can call this one columns or I can call them maybe table calls something like that okay table columns so to get tables in the column in laravel you just write schema schema there is there are two different schemas you make sure that you import the schema of facades okay you make you make sure that you import the scheme of what of facades okay or facades of facades this one's okay otherwise if they import the schema of the other one it will not work so if you do like this, then import table of schema and then you specify your table. So Laravel will be able to return back. Let me do it here and you see. We'll be able to return back to you everything. All the table columns. Can you see that? So if we come here in our financial period, you'll see that these are the table columns. Eh? So if you want to get to them, you see total expense. It is here. It's the last column. So if you come here, you see total expenses. So that is how you can get the table columns. In what in Laravel so you have our table columns we keep them here table columns okay can let me call it table calls we put it there so we're getting the table columns now the next thing we can get uh, we're going to create uh, variables okay we're going to create variables now that we have the table columns now the next thing you're going to get variables why do you need to create variables? Because we shall need these things, okay? These ones, eh? So we're going to create those variables. So I'm going to write this, because this method can become so very big, I'm going to write this separately, okay? So I'll come here and say, uh, maybe you can say variables, okay? Variables, variables, variables equals to this dot make variables so i passed it the columns okay so if i give this method make vars make variables this column it should be able to generate for us but this method we have not created it so let's go ahead and create it okay so so we go ahead and create this method put it here outside here so this method we can call it uh, so it is going to receive what it's going to be receiving uh columns okay it will be receiving table columns okay so it will be receiving table columns so if i come here and i do dd i should be able to see that i'm in this method so if i come here you see i'm able to see that i'm in that method because it is the one that is having this data variable and now so after doing that we're going to loop okay we're going to loop Okay, so in the loop, before we loop, we're going to loop through these tables. So before we loop, we're going to say um, data. So that's going to, that's going to be we're going to be putting data 
is going to be an empty string and then we're going to put our e, our i which is going to be our counter and then the done so this done will be containing the the column that we have finished so i don't want to repeat them this l work as our counter and then this one work as our what as the data itself that we're going to return so after doing that i hope you're together the next thing that we're going to do you are going to do now the for each okay so i'm going to loop through uh i'm going to loop through these uh table columns okay i'm going to loop through them okay so when i loop through them so that's a loop you can see just a simple loop you can just say loop that as that so just a simple loop so when i loop through, through them i'm going to trim the key okay so the key is just just the the variable so let me dd here and see what what i meant by the key so if i come here and refresh you'll see this is what is meant by the key okay that is the id like an item okay i just trim it all right so after trimming it i check if it is empty i continue so if the string of that key is empty i go ahead and continue so after doing that i check if this key is already in an array i continue so if this key is already in the done i also continue so i should not be able to write a variable twice so after doing that the next thing that i'm going to do i'm going to to check if this id is a key i mean sorry if 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 let me come again if this key is an id if this key is an id so you know like our ids will always be integers okay okay so i check if this key is an id the data is going to be this okay so i go ahead and check if if this key is an id so in the data we're going to put there an integer okay so i check if the key is id our data i just simply say int okay and then i put that key and then i put the semicolon and then i put a new line so let me just show you now what we have here as our what as our as our as our what as our variables so you can see we now have this okay so if it is an id it is going to be integer id and then equal to zero so at the end of the day if we copy this and we paste it here in our dat code we shall be able to achieve this okay we shall be able to achieve this so here we are trying to create this section so i'm going to put now else if it is not an id so if it is not an id if it is not an id you should do this i'm going to explain let me cut it let me just copy it and explain it okay i put this one let me explain it so if it's not an id i check i check i i add it there i add e, i if it's not an id i add it in our what i add it on our data i concatenate it there you see i concatenate it in the other string i just simply say string and then i put the key and then i then put the what this uh i i equate it to what i equate it to this uh double colon double quotes okay so i escape these quotes in order they should not be able to uh to 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 temper with my normal quotes because i want these quotes to be represented the way they are and then i put a br line so i check if the last word of this one contains an id underscore if this thing contains id let's say maybe it is a company id whatever id whatever id if it contains that id i go ahead and create another key okay and then i replace it with text so here it is simple terms that if something is has maybe like company id we shall create another variable called company text okay so that we should be able to have the id of the company at the same time we have where we are saving the word text so you, when you are sending back the database if you maybe it is, it is an id of a company we shall have also to send back the name of that company as a text so that you can have all these things in your database 
so this is the case the last one is an id let's say maybe user id whatever id product id whatever id so if it has an id as long as it has an id we shall give it an extra thing so we replace that id this key we replace it an id and then also create for it a what another string so if it has an id it means that we shall have if it has an underscore id at the end of it it means that we shall have two variables there and then we say string and then we do the same thing so if i go ahead and display this if i go ahead and display this here so if i go ahead and refresh you'll see that i have variables can you see that i have variables so it means that i have successfully generated this part of our of our code so if i can just simply call you see I'll just be doing like this tap it creates for me all the variables without me repeating myself i just simply say ctrl c and then i come to my project for example here you'll see i just paste here can you see that that is so beautiful that is so beautiful like i'm not going to repeat myself to create variables again i'll be just specifying the tables and then i just say print and then, then it generates for me the variable so for the rest of my programming experience I'm not going again to be able to copy the name of the variable, paste it here, make sure the spelling is not cool, it's not wrong, what and what. I just click and I'll be able to achieve that. So we're going to do the same logic for the remaining fields. We're going to do the same that's going to generate this one. We're going to do the same that's going to generate this one until we finish the whole thing. It's going to be painful, but when we finish it, it is going to save us for the rest of the project. So whatever model that I want, I'll be just putting there its name and the endpoint and where it's fed the data and then say generate. I just simply come and copy. So it will, when I generate, when I say generate, it does something like this for me. I just simply say copy and then I paste in my what? In my Flutter project and then that mod is done. It has the whole logical fetching online. I just proceed to other important things. So that is the whole point. It's going to be painful. I know it's not even so much painful. Like right now, I've just finished something that is going to create for me variables. So I don't need to suffer again about variables. But for the rest of my, I should say, life, while I'm not suffering with what? With creating variables. But it's something that you do in just one day. And you do it once. For the rest of your project, you just copy this generator and paste it there. And you're done. You just click on print. You have the whole model. At the end of the day, you'll find that your productivity has insanely, insanely increased. So that's it. So instead of dying, so I'll just simply go ahead and return. So whatever call this one, we'll just return to it. Let me return the data here. We we'll return to it the variables as just I've designed. So you can pause the video and look very carefully and make sure that you also able to get that and make sure that you understand you can just try to understand because it is important if you understand all right so that is it so i hope you've seen it how we generate the variables okay so yeah make variables so this is where you're calling it so now we have the variables so that's it in this level for this lecture we are able to generate our variables for example where there is company id it adds another variable called the company text id so if you have maybe like user id it will add user uh, user text so that in the user id it is the id that we do in the back end and then the text it is now what we are showing to the what to the user and that will save us a lot a lot a lot all right so that's it for today so in the next lecture we shall resume from there where we're going to finish uh generating the entire model so we can be able to use that power to speed up our programming what our programming experience so make sure that you practice make sure that you understand that and make sure that uh, you don't give up so that we are able to reach up to the heart up to our last uh, very our very last what our very last target of creating the project and earning all this knowledge together so you can do you can be able to do what to make um, this insane 